we're going to be talking about how to place and tape an IV catheter in place. For this video, I'm going to be going through the way I like to prep for and place IV catheters, but keep in mind that there's a lot of different ways of doing this. And as long as you're following appropriate protocols, they're not necessarily wrong, they're just different. So without any more ado, this is how I place and tape an IV catheter. Step one is setup. Make sure you have everything ready ahead of time. It's the most frustrating thing when you're wrestling a dog, you finally get the catheter in, and then all of a sudden you realize you forgot to pull your tape. So uh, what things should you have set up? Well, I like to have my gauze with my selected antiseptic. So I personally use 4% chlorhexidine with either alcohol or a chlorhexidine solution to follow, but some places use iodine. So whatever you have, what, use at your clinic, make sure you have that prepared. You should have your catheters that you're planning on selecting from. I like to have two different sizes and one or two of each catheter. That way I don't have to get up and run for another catheter in case I don't get it on the first try. You want to have your clippers so that you can shave and hopefully your clippers work. It's also very frustrating when you sit down to place the catheter and you turn your clippers on and they don't work. You want to have your T-port ready and flushed. I like to put a T-port on every catheter uh, unless the patient is there for euthanasia, just because it's great to have the extra access rather than just having uh, a port on the hub of your catheter. You want to have your tape and or vet wrap ready so that you can quickly secure your catheter. Again, a lot of different ways of doing that. I like to have two wide pieces and two skinny pieces. You want to have supplies for drawing blood if you're planning on drawing blood from your catheter. There are are some people who prefer not to draw blood from catheters. I do like to, mostly to save another vessel. Uh, as long as the catheter is placed well and the blood is flowing well. Uh, if the catheter wasn't placed well or if the blood doesn't easily flow from the catheter, then I will not draw for uh, my blood tubes from that. Step two is choosing your catheter and choosing your vessel. Uh, the primary vessels that are used for IV catheter placement in veterinary medicine are the cephalic and accessory vessels and the medial and lateral saphenous vessels. Some lesser used vessels that I also like to keep in my tool bag are the dorsal pedal, dorsal palmar vessels on the top aspect of the paw under the tarsus and under the carpus. These vessels are particularly good for obese animals or for animals with stubby legs and for like bulldogs or fat puppies, uh, just because there's a little bit less fat in these areas and the vessels can be a little bit easier to find. Keep in mind when you're choosing your vessel, why the patient is there. If they're there for an amputation, make sure you're not putting your catheter in the leg that's getting amputated. And if they're there for imaging, make sure that wherever your catheter is, isn't going to interfere with their imaging. It's also really useful if you're placing a catheter for a patient undergoing anesthesia to have it in a front leg if possible, just for ease of access. If you have a really big dog and your catheter's in a back leg, but you're trying to induce your pet back here and you're trying to come up here to intubate, it's just a little bit easier if it's all collectively located in the front of the pet. As to what size catheter that you should use, I and I'm sure most people have been taught go big or go home, and I've certainly followed that for most of my career up until the past year or so. Year or so. Really, lately, I've been trying to think more about why the pet is there and place the smallest catheter that is comfortable for the patient with the biggest catheter that'll get the job done. So if your patient is there for a blood transfusion, you obviously wanna have the biggest, shortest catheter you can, but if your patient is there for a long time, you might wanna place a longer catheter so that it is at less risk of slipping out of your patient. I wanted to show you this chart that goes over how fast fluids can flow through different sizes of catheters. And if you, like me, were surprised at how fast fluids can flow through some of those smaller or medium sized catheters, you'll realize that not every pet needs a really big IV catheter. You don't need to be slamming an 18 gauge into the 5k cap just because you can. 
In general, you can use a 24 gauge catheter for neonates and pediatrics, a 22 for small cats and small dogs, a 20 for small medium dogs, and then for large medium and large dogs, 18s, and then your giant breeds can even get 16s, especially your Great Dane that's there for a GDV. You wanna have a big catheter in so that you can give that leader bolus as fast as you can. Step three is preparing your site. I personally like to shave all the way around for patients that are getting hospitalized. I just find that it makes the catheter easier to remove later. But if your patient is just undergoing a quick sedated procedure, you may just need to be able to shave a little square in the front of their leg. I think the most important thing here is that you're shaving enough room that the hub of your catheter will fall within the shaved zone. Obviously, sometimes you don't quite know where you're going to place your catheter, but try to think about it while you're shaving, because if you shave really high and place really low, the chances are that the hub of your catheter is not going to fall within your aseptic field, which is the goal of shaving, is to help maintain the aseptic quality of the catheter. After you're shaved, the skin should be aseptically prepped with whatever your hospital's protocol is. Keep in mind that if you need to palpate for where the vessel is, try to do that before you prep so that, again, your field will stay as aseptic as possible. Step four is placing your IV catheter. For placing your catheter, you wanna make sure that your hub is up and you wanna use an appropriately deep angle to get through the skin of your patient, depending on how thick the skin is, which will vary on the type of patient it is, the age, why they're there, etc. If you have any questions about that, make sure you see my top five biggest IV catheter mistakes video. Once you're through the skin of your patient, you will hopefully get a flash. If you don't immediately get one, try directing your catheter further in the direction that you think the vessel is. Once you get your flash, you can feed your catheter off of your stylet and into the vessel. Some people, before they feed the catheter off, like to push the whole stylet catheter combination in a little further so that the catheter is fully seated within the vessel. I personally don't usually do this just because I do find that a lot of people tend to push through the vessel as opposed to push further into the vessel. And this is just a personal preference. Um, I haven't had problems feeding my catheters off of the stylet without using this technique, but sometimes I do use it on larger dogs or if I'm just concerned I didn't get a very good flash, I will try to advance both together. Once you feel that you're fully seated in the vessel, you should again slide your catheter off of the stylet and attach either your T-port or the catheter cap onto the hub of your catheter. I prefer to attach the cap of my catheter while I tape it in place just because I think it's a little bit easier than having to deal with the T-port while you're taping. And the last step is securing and flushing, flushing your catheter. Uh, again, controversial topic. There's a lot of different ways to tape a catheter in place. As long as the catheter stays aseptic and stays in place, I don't think any of them are necessarily wrong. The way I like to tape an IV catheter in place is to use my skinny piece of tape to go under and then over the top of the hub and then around the patient's arm, and then use a wide piece to go under the hub of the catheter and then around. I do not cut a release strip in my tape uh, just because I don't find that it's beneficial and I find that it's a waste of time, but if you do it, it's totally just a personal preference. And then I like to take a piece of vet wrap and loosely secure it around the top of the catheter and the T-port after I've attached the T-port, just because I think it makes it a little bit easier to remove the catheter. Um, and also if you need to untape it for any reason while the patient is hospitalized, I think it makes it easier. After the vet wrap is in place, I will put my bra strap on around my T-port and I like to use an extra long bra strap so that it comes back around the top of the T-port tape. Oh my God, it's lunchtime. I then like to use my last wide piece of tape to secure the T-port itself. Here, it's very important to make sure that you are not kinking your T-port because it is the most frustrating thing when you spend all of that time getting the catheter in place and everything taped and bandaged, and then you put your patient on fluids and it is just occluding the entire time. So make sure you're cognizant of how you're taping your T-port. All right, well, that's the basics for how to place an IV catheter and how to secure it. If you have any questions um, or if you have any comments about ways that you prefer to do that, leave them in the comment section. As always, if you have any requests, also leave me a comment. If you've made it this far, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.